Well, hello everyone. I hope you're doing well. And I wish a Buen Camino to those of you who are about to start your first, maybe second or third Camino, or maybe you're on it right now. Today, I want to talk about food. Oh yeah, something we all love and we look forward to when we're walking the Camino. So let's get into it right after the short intro. I'm Anita, AKA the professor. Join me and my husband, Kevin, as we strap on our backpacks, grab our passports and explore this amazing world. So what I want to share with you regarding food um, is based on my two Caminos. The first back in 2019, when my husband and I walked the Camino Portuguese starting in Porto. And then in 2022, I walked the Camino del Norte starting in Irun in um, 2022. Both of these offered wonderful experiences with food. And I just want to share my experience with eating along the Camino. Now, caveat, I eat everything, okay? I have no dietary restrictions. And I know many of you might have dietary restrictions. And let me assure you, you can eat while doing a Camino, all right? There's lots of options out there. Uh, you can certainly go to grocery stores. You can cook your own meals in uh, many of the albergues, not all of them, but many of them have kitchens. Also, uh, if you use Google Translate or if you know some Spanish, then you can certainly talk with the waiters or the staff at the albergues or hotels, and they can help you um, meet your dietary needs, okay? So don't worry. If you have a dietary restriction, walk a Camino, you'll be fine. But what I wanna share with you is um, how I ate um, along the Camino and where I ate, okay? so. Let's go ahead and start. I always started with a breakfast. I would often walk maybe a kilometer or two and then find a cafe that was open where I could find a croissant, cafe con leche. Uh, rarely would I have anything heavier than that. I just did not want to walk with a full stomach. Lunch was often maybe something that we had picked up along the way, maybe some cheese, fruits, things like that. The best lunch, though, was this food truck at the top of the mountain on the Portuguese Camino. Oh, my word. Great food. And we really needed it that day. Sometimes we even went to maybe a grocery store and got something pre-made. Something that does surprise many pilgrims and walkers along the Camino, particularly for their first one, is the hours in which restaurants may or may not be open. So you do need to adjust your eating habits to meet those of the country you're in. So as I mentioned, I always had an early breakfast straight away, find a little coffee, croissant, something like that. Then maybe what we would call a second breakfast, a little, little heavier, um, maybe around 10 o'clock, something like that. Because we would try to finish our walk by one or two in the afternoon, at all, if at all possible, because many of the restaurants will close for lunch around two o'clock. So if you don't get into town early enough, you're going to get there hungry and there won't be anything open. So you do need to kind of think about that as you go along, all right? So I'm gonna tell you how we would adjust for that. If we made it into town early enough, um, we would go to lunch and have um, a light meal, uh, nothing too terribly heavy. 
And then if we were at an albergue or someplace, we might um, have the pilgrim meal if that was available. Or depending on how we felt, we would wait until the restaurants opened at eight o'clock and go and have a more substantial meal. Now, those meals are going to be a little bit more expensive. Certainly the pilgrim meals are um, a much lesser um, option as far as expense, but going to a restaurant gives you a lot more options. And as you can see, I just devour paella. And when I can find the mussels um, swimming in garlic and olive oil, oh, amazing. And of course, you can certainly find lots of meats. Um, I love my seafood, so fried squid, all of that. And of course, you've got to have dessert, all right? But the best options for us typically meant going out for tapas or pinchos, depending on the part of the country you're in, and enjoying a very light snack at a local tavern, all right? We enjoyed this the most, okay? Even more than a pilgrim meal because we would meet the locals, we could sit and chat, listen to what was going on in town. And in most cases, if you ordered a wine or a beer, you would get your pinchos and tapas for free, all right? Now that's not everywhere, but in many, many places, this was um, the norm. And oftentimes I would end up spending maybe, oh, two to six euros. And I could sit there all night and enjoy wonderful food and great conversation. Now, the thing with tapas, you never know what you're gonna get. So you might get um, these things that look like meatballs, but they were actually cuttlefish in a gravy, yum. All right, certainly calamare. You get these sandwiches with various meat. Of course, the Spanish torta, oh, amazing. And that would you know, vary depending on the region you were in as far as what might be included. But you can see here, you know, for six euros, a very, very nice meal. We really didn't want to eat heavy, but you know, we can't pass up the Patron peppers, all right? Um, never, ever, ever pass up those. They are not hot and spicy. They are wonderful, they're flavorful. They also have a lot of salt that you need after the end of a long walk. And like I said, chatting with the locals is just such a joy. And you know, at the end of the day, what do you really want? You want to sit and relax, take in what you did for that walk. You also want nutritious food. You need the proteins, all right? You need the salt. You need, um, if you can eat the cheese, the breads, the carbohydrates, this is what your body needs for fuel for the next day. So you want to be very conscious about what you're putting in your body, regardless of what it is. And, you know, you can't pass up the wine there. If you drink alcohol, the Spanish and Portuguese wines are to die for. Uh, reds, whites, it doesn't matter. They're all delicious and they're cheap. The food, like I said, it's it varies. It depends on the region. The manchetto cheese, uh, the pâtés. Oh, you know, you have to try this, all right? And like I said, the joy to me was eating whatever they put in front of me, all right? Um, the plated cheese with the balsamic vinegar. Oh, you know, I had never thought of that, but it was so wonderful. And then, of course, complimenting it with a nice wine, some great conversation. That's the way to enjoy the Camino. And a special note if you're on the North Route. The North Route, of course, being by the sea, you are going to experience amazing seafood. The pulpu, the octopus, cooked in many different ways. The squid, all right, I had had calamari but I had never had a whole grilled squid, all right? Try it. Um, all kinds of fish, 
haddock, cod, uh, the tuna. They put tuna in many of the salads. And of course, at the end of the day, you have a cafe con leche, maybe a cafe crema, and you enjoy the wine with your friends. So that is food on the Camino from my point of view. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you can, maybe buy me a coffee or a glass of wine. Just click that little icon up there, okay? Thank you again for watching. Enjoy, good eating, and buen camino.